And global affairs analyst Colin Zwinke joins me via Skype from Belgium to discuss this development. Good to have you join us, Colin Zwinke. Now, some people believe that this is another attempt to beautify the system and with a new face that very few people know and project the image that something, you know, is going to change. Um, do you agree with this assertion? Uh, a vicious circle, isn't it, uh, precious? Yeah, um, that assertion, in my opinion, is uh, spot on. Uh, but of course, the um, Lebanese uh, political elite now have an opportunity to prove the world, especially the Lebanese people, to prove them wrong by making this uh, work. But yes, indeed, um, uh, this is not uh, any different from all the uh, previous uh, failed attempts uh, which actually boils down to the fact that uh, Lebanese politics is the client based religiously tinted, and that until they depart from uh, from such, that uh, you know the circle will continue to um, you know just go around. Right. So this protest in Lebanon, or the protest we have seen so far in Lebanon, um, was filled by allegations of corruption and mismanagement by the same political leaders who are due to nominate the next prime minister. Now, do you think that he will be capable of implementing the much-needed reforms in that country? Um, I believe that his um, antecedents uh, actually shows that he has the capacity to do so. Now, we are talking about a 48-year-old, um, you know, highly experienced uh, young man, um, very strong uh, academic uh, background, and uh, appears to enjoy, as of today, uh, the support of overwhelming majority of uh, members of parliament of um, uh, Lebanon. So he has all of that uh, positive, you know, working on his side. But the um, problem, the issues in uh, Lebanon run deeper than, uh, you know, having the best uh, academic backgrounds and experience. Because ultimately, uh, the warlords, you know, that emerged from the civil war, um, you know, that took place, uh, that ended them, um, you know, about a decade or two ago, uh, they continue to be very, very irrelevant. Uh, corruption is a very huge uh, issue. So it all depends on how he's able to navigate all of this. But considering his uh, antecedents, I think um, you know he has the capacity uh, to do so. So both the former minister um, Diab and the, the one who has been designated now Adib um, have the same credentials apart from support from the parliament. But when you also look at the fact that both of them served under the former prime minister um, Najib uh, Makati, Mikati rather now. We didn't see that much needed reforms during um, Prime Minister Diab's um, tenure. So what are the chances that we will not see large protests on the streets of Lebanon in the coming months? Well, I believe that um, his uh, political uh, savviness uh, is one uh, credential that he holds uh, that will actually um, you know, help him out here in navigating the soil water, the political soil water of uh, Lebanon. Um, now, let us uh, assess his first uh, action. His first action was actually uh, taking a trip to the site of, uh, you know, the devastation uh, occasioned by the bomb. Um, he is known to uh, tread very carefully. He is known to be a very good uh, negotiator uh, as well. So, Adi, uh, like I said uh, previously, appears to have, um, you know, all that it takes to bring uh, the different, um, you know, factions together. And most importantly, I believe that if he is able to assert himself as his own man, not just a puppet, somebody, you know, put in there uh, to do the beatings of, uh, you know, the powerful political elite, which is obviously inexplicable. But uh, if he shows himself to be uh, his own man, 
Uh, I, there are signs that the Lebanese people will give him uh, a chance. Uh, but we know that asserting himself uh, as his own man is, is, is a bit difficult when you look at the sectarian um, politics in Lebanon. But let's also look at foreign interference at this moment. We know that um, the president of France will be in that country. It will be the second time he'll be visiting Lebanon since the blast in Beirut. Um, mm -hmm. There are tiny reforms in that country to um, financial uh, aid to be given to that country should mm -hmm. lebanon be weary of some level of foreign interference or should that be something that is is that something that is needed at this time at this point in time and indeed you have uh, done um, you know an accurate uh, summary of uh, of the situation uh, as it relates to uh, you know foreign interest in uh, in lebanon uh, but it doesn't look like uh, Lebanon has got uh, very much, uh, you know, choices at this time. Now, uh, things have gone as uh, speedily as they did because um, uh, President Emmanuel Macron of um, uh, France has, uh, you know, shown interest and intervened in a manner that is non-evasive, I mean politically. He's put all of this in the hands of uh, Lebanese uh, politicians, taxing them, to find a consensus, um, you know, uh, candidate. Now, what happens behind the scene, we do not know. But there are also other worries. Iran has interests, and Saudi Arabia as well. So, but the reason I say that um, the Lebanese people, especially the politicians, uh, don't have very much choice is because the country is lying belly down economically. I mean, the um, uh, currency has lost value of over 80% in the last uh, period. So they need all the finances, and they know that uh, until they institute some of these uh, much-needed, uh, you know, reforms, that the finances coming from outside, uh, you know, will stay outside where they are. So, yes, uh, we, there are cause to worry, but I think um, there is also cause for, uh, you know, cautious optimism with uh, the gentleman at the that has now uh, emerged, uh, Prime Minister Degis next. I will continue to see how um, things play out in that country. Global Affairs Analyst Collins Uweke, thanks for talking to us. Thank you for having me, Precious.